Hello and welcome back to Crazy Dove Studio. In this video, we will look at how to configure backup for a SQL database on an always on availability group configuration. SQL Server Always On is a high availability and disaster recovery solution introduced when SQL Server 2012 was launched. Now there are two configurations for Always On. One is clustering and the other is availability group. Now cl clustering is a configuration wherein you have a shared storage between two, diff or two or multiple nodes. So today we will be looking at the backup of the SQL data on an Always On availability group now an availability group configuration is wherein data or the database is replicated among multiple nodes of an always on availability group cluster unlike traditional clustering where a storage is shared among multiple nodes and the storage is owned by different nodes whenever there is any issues with the active node the availability group is a scenario wherein the data actually has multiple replicas across all the nodes that are part of that particular availability group. The configuration of the availability group looks something like this. So I just wanted to take you through the configuration and how it looks like so that you have a better idea of what you might be looking at. So in our configuration here, I have two, uh, two nodes in my availability group. And as you can see, the configuration, the availability group name that I have is called as SQL underscore AG1. No, there are two replicas, as you can see here, one SQL one is SQL 1 and one is SQL 2 and at the moment as you can look at it you can see that the SQL 2 is the primary node and SQL 1 is the secondary node and the databases that I have shared across is DB1 so if I drop this down you will see that we have other databases here as well so these are all you know private databases or um, databases that belong to that particular instance only and the ones which are shared or made part of the availability there are a few configuration that you would want to look at before you configure the backup itself one of them is the federation of the backup federated backup is is a method wherein the backup of data is taken from a secondary node rather than the primary node so that the primary node is not affected during the backup because of increased load and the secondary node which is uh, very much idle will be able to handle that backup so to support such a scenario just go on to the active node or the primary of your uh, availability group and click on backup preferences and there you have a bunch of options related to where the backup has to be taken from here by default it is always prefer secondary so prefer secondary means that if the secondary is available then it is preferred to take the backup from from secondary but for some reason if you have just like two nodes and there is some issue with one node and there was a failure and now you have just one node in your availability group which is active and you have preferred secondary option enabled when the backup occurs Networker is going to request the API to query for the uh, for the preferred node to be backed up and since it's only one node available it can take a backup from the primary as well but if in case you select here as secondary only then all the backup will be taken taken using the secondary replica only and if in case for some reason you have only one uh, instance or one node available at that particular point then the backup is not going to happen the next option is primary so this again is self-explanatory uh, if this option is enabled then the backup is preferred to be taken from the primary replica and then uh, any replica is that the backups can be taken from any replica that is available for backup the preferred method for the backup is the prefer secondary so that you can read the data from the secondary replica whenever possible the other option that you need to keep in mind or make sure is enabled is that all your servers that are part of the availability group should have a readable secondary. Now that we have taken a look at how the 
availability group configuration looks like let's hop on to the networker server to start configuring the backups for a backup of sql on an availability group you should always configure the client instance name as the name of the availability group so if you if we go back you will see that the name of my availability group is sql underscore ag1 so let's go ahead and create an instance new client wizard and let's name our client here which is sql underscore ag1 leave the option as traditional and click on next so in the next window you will see multiple options like file system and sql so since we are doing a sql backup we select sql server as the application and then click next here are some generic uh, options you can select a higher parallelism if you want to and then click next again now you will be shown what database you want to select for from your availability group so generally uh, if you have smaller multiple databases you can select all of them in one but if in case you have very large database with huge volume of data then it is again advised to have or to split your data into multiple uh, workflows so that uh, the long running backup do not hinder the schedule for any of the databases that are in your availability group make sure that the user that you're using has sysadmin privileges on the database and then click next so here you have some advanced options for configuring the backups for your sql server so a few of them are related to compression it is not advised to enable compression or encryption on the backup that is being stored on a data domain because this will directly impact the deduplication factor of your database uh, you can uh, enable database consistency checks if you want to so what this does is it checks the consistency of a backup before uh, starting the actual backup this is going to take additional time uh, and might impact your backup window there are a few other options uh, related to the uh, lock truncation you can also enable striping in case you have a large database and want to create multiple stripes out of the database so you can uh, make use of multiplexing and have you know uh, more streams created from a single database so this is mainly required whenever you have a very large database if you have subsequent small database which fits into your backup window then you can any, uh, leave it to one stripe summary of all the options that you have just selected take a quick look on the on the instances client instances that you have the client configuration wizard when you configure an availability group creates the relevant nodes that belong to that particular availability group automatically so right now you do not see any client instances here with uh, which are related to the sql server so let me go and hit create and you will see that it is successfully added all the clients click on finish and here you go so we have these two selected and uh, uh, the sql 1 and sql 2 created which are basically the nodes of the availability group and the availability group itself the save set is ms sql so whenever the, you have an availability group you have ms sql hash and name of your availability group so let's just quickly take a look at the properties so nothing much relevant on the general tab but here if you take a look at globals 2 of 2 you will see that the administrator at sql 1 has been added automatically to this group if in case you want to allow uh, so this is mainly required during restoration because the restoration is to be done on the target all other information are general information so whatever advanced settings you had selected that will show up in your application information so let's go ahead and add this to 
any of the group that I have. I think I have one for SQL, so let me just add it there and select OK. So I also wanted to show you the configuration of the workflow, especially the level. So if you take a look at the backup action, for backups related to SQL using NMM, you have three levels available to you. One being the full backup, which mainly means that it will back up the entire database along with uh, all the uh, logs and so on. The next is called the logs only backup. So logs only backup is thing what I have. Yeah. So logs only backup is wherein only your transaction logs are backed up, backed up and purged. Then you have the cumulative incremental backup. So cumulative incremental backup is nothing but the, uh, uh, another term for differential backup. If you're aware about differential backup, cumulative incremental backup backs up any changes that have been done to the database since the last full backup. So in my uh, setup here, I have configured a full on Sunday and log only backup for the rest of the week. Let's look at the other configuration that is available to us. So here you have the browse period and the retention period. For a SQL backup to be restored, it has to be browsable. A recoverable save set of a SQL cannot be restored. So always try to keep the browse and the retention period same for SQL backups. So here you have overrides and here is the summary of what you have selected. So if you can see the action, it has a full and transaction log backup for the rest of the day. And let's click on configure to finish that. There are certain requirements where uh, you would require a transaction log backup to be run every hour. So in such a scenario, you can keep the interval here as one so that your backup runs every hour. Also, if in case uh, you have a scenario wherein you want to run the transaction log backup every hour, every day, but once a week you want to take one full backup, maybe on a Sunday, then in such a config, uh, in such a scenario, so in such a scenario, what you could do is you could set the interval to one hour, meaning that this particular workflow runs every one hour then in the backup action so what you could do is you could select the level of backup that you want to run for the rest of the day so when you do this what happens is on the on sunday wherein we have marked the level as full the backup is going to run full only once and when the schedule is triggered again for the same day it is going to take the level which is been uh, set for set for the parameter force backup level so let's go ahead and complete this and test a backup so the backup is initiating i'm going to pause the video uh, pause the recording here and come back when the backup completes all right so our backup has completed successfully let's check the details real quick okay here you will see that we have a full backup done uh, the size of the backup is pretty uh, small you will always see an additional save set associated with the sql database so that particular save set is actually the metadata save set for the database that you're taking in order to restore make sure that you have both these save sets available so if you do not have the metadata save set available for a particular database then the restore is not going to work let's just take a quick look at what logs are available for you for troubleshooting on the client machine so i am right now on so my active node is sql 2 so i'm on sql 1 so according to our configuration the backups are supposed to happen on the replica server so sql 1 is the replica server at the moment so if you see here it is secondary so let's just take a look inside the logs. So program files, EMC networker, NSR, and the logs for NMM are under app logs. Let's open this up. So there are two 
files which are of importance to us the xpsa.messages and nsr sql sv if in case there are any issues with your configuration like missing aliases uh, maybe the uh, ip name resolution is not working or any of the communication related issues will be logged as part of the xpsa.messages any other backup failure logs related to the interaction with the SQL API will be part of the NSR SQL SV. So let's go ahead and open this. Let's go to the last instance that we just did. All right, so here are the entries in our logs. Please ignore the time because there is some time difference between my SQL server and the backup server. So uh, if you see here, you'll see that the SQL NSR SQL SV command is run and there are a few debug related logs and you will see that the backups completed successfully so if in case there are any failures these are the two logs that you can look at to get any insight on the failures or errors that you have thanks for sticking with me till the end of this video i hope you found this useful if you have any questions or comments share it with our community in the comment section below or you can drop me a message at my twitter account i will see you on another video Goodbye.